throughout the latter half of the 2010s, Cartoon Network began pushing for their shows to have miniseries, a collection of 5 to 10 episodes that are all connected in their plots, with Adventure Time's Stakes and Clarence's Stormy Sleepover being examples of this. In 2018, as the trend was dying down for the network, OKKO OK put out their version in the form of the Point Prep arc. Five 11 minute outings that allowed the show to get away from the plaza for more than a single episode for the first time in the series, and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to go through each one of the five episodes, break them down, and see whether or not this format truly elevated the already fantastic standard of one of the best cartoons of the 2010s. Anyway, spoiler warning aside, let's go ahead and jump into the first episode Wisdom, Strength, and Charisma. You're not the type to crack under pressure, are you, Enid? I, I... The episode starts off with some classic bodega shenanigans, re-establishing the bond between Enid, Rad, and K.O. that the rest of the episode is built upon. It's a really fun sequence with some unnecessarily clever ideas and animation, which is a sentence that you'll hear me say in different ways throughout this entire video. After they finish filming, we get to the setup of the arc, being that Enid is accepting the invitation that she received earlier in the season to attend Point Prep, a hero training academy fittingly ran by Point, the Avengers of the OKKO OK universe. The over-the-top nature of the academy is foreshadowed in the delivery of Enid's uniform that kicks off the crying fest that makes up the first chunk of the episode. The sappiness of it all is both heartwarming and hilarious, as the show's tendency to go off-model works really well to bring some comedy to the scene without making it any less heartfelt. There's some foreshadowing of later events in the arc that are played off as jokes here too, like Rad's antenna being revealed to grow back, which makes the rewatches of the arc even more enjoyable. The first conflict of the miniseries being K.O. missing Enid's departure gives the first part some kind of a conflict to do exposition around as we catch up with the first side character elevated to main character status for the miniseries, Sparko. Throughout this episode, he serves as a nice middle ground between the down-to-earth Enid and the literal sky-high Academy folk as he gives a nice explanation of the Academy to the audience while also getting Enid nervous for her big action scene at the end of the episode. The three different Hogwarts style houses are introduced here, being the Triforce adjacent, Wisdom, Strength, and Charisma, with Courage being subbed out in order to give a place to Elodie, the previously established friend of foe of Enid, who's going to be more important in the next episode, but remains silent in this one. All of the character designs are superb in this miniseries, as every character uses the OKKO OK aspect of the OCS character designs to be terrifically unique. Anyway, as Sparko describes the sorting trial with a fourth option of being sent home, Enid's anxiety peaks, giving a hiding KO an opportunity to hop out of the bag he snuck in and embarrass her by offering her her digestion medication. This scene sounds like it should be annoying, and at times it kind of is, but with just how adorable KO is, mixed with how quickly Enid gets over it, the scene is just more funny than anything else. KO giving Enid his gift, which ends up being a framed photo of the trio, is just as adorable as the protagonist, and creates the first of many really charming moments in this arc. Anyway, KO bails for the rest of the episode as we make it to the Academy, meeting Chip Damage, leader of Point Prep, as well as the leaders of Wisdom, Strength, and Charisma, being Gray Man, Foxtail, and Sunshine respectively. These guys aren't really expanded upon further for now, as we get to the action sequence I alluded to earlier, being Enid's fight against the heads of the heads of each department, with her joining the group's leader she manages to defeat. Despite being based around a play on words, the fight is predictably fantastic, as the choreography is stellar and the references abundant. I mean seriously, just look at these shots. The show goes for one final emotional moment with Enid getting inspiration from the photos of her friends, using it to emotionally and physically reflect, giving us the climatic endings of climatic endings to this showdown. The ending is really fun too with Sparko freaking out, and I love the show pretending that it's going to do the classic protagonist joining all three routes thing before just shoving her into charisma so that she can hang out with Elodie. Finally, the last couple moments foreshadow the whole gifted and talented thing, gives us perhaps the funniest quick gag of the episode in the form of the group chat, and ends with a hopeful vibe as Enid assures her friends that she's going to be okay. Anyway, as you can probably gather, I really like this opening episode. It's got great jokes, action sequences, exposition, pretty much everything you can ask for in an opener to a miniseries, feeling like a complete episode while also definitely being more set up than anything else. Really great opener, and a perfect transition 
transition to the next episode, Bittersweet Rivals. For a moment there, it felt like you were actual bitter rivals nursing an ancient feud. From the beginning of the episode, literally in the title card, it's made clear what the goal is, to get Enid and Elodie back on at least friendly terms. And in the 11 minutes that the episode has, it does a fantastic job in marching towards that goal. But first, the episode starts with Enid getting more acquainted with the members of Elodie's fan club, Miss Pastel and Koala Princess. I've already touched on how impressive these designs are for characters that are going to hang around for less than a half dozen episodes, but this conversation also serves the purpose of showing that Enid is more than capable of being pleasant in conversation, which further puts the blame onto her new roommate, Enid's middle school friend turned enemy, Elodie. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a huge fan of Elodie's character both in and outside of this miniseries for multiple reasons, not the least of which being just how funny she is in every single interaction. Okay, Gayo has this ability to craft characters that both actually have depth and are over the top in ways that create a constant flow of comedy every time the character opens their mouth, and Elodie is one of the best examples of this. It bounces off the subdued Enid really well to create a fun dynamic that permeates throughout the rest of the episode, as the characters don't really have a conversation until the very end. Instead, we just get them engaging in small battles as we see what a typical day at the academy looks like, starting with Enid predictably sleeping in. Rad and K.O. being a part of this episode through the photograph is a cool and funny idea, but it is a bit lame with the knowledge that this is the only episode they don't physically appear in, but I'll address that more later in the video. Anyway, Enid rushing to get ready serves a dual purpose, both to let the show get in what feels like their billionth still somehow funny anime adjacent joke in, and to further juxtapose the titular rivals. Anyway, the rest of the episode is made up of the three classes taught by the three different heads, where Enid and Elodie go head to head in each one. First up is charisma with the challenge of hero entrances, which is a hilariously perfect way to compare the two. Elodie's entrance is perfectly Elodie, complete with bright colors and all, and Enid's ends up fittingly ninja-esque, with hers devolving into a dig towards Elodie's lack of loyalty, which while it definitely is a bit overdramatic even given the nature of the competition, it still gives us some nice choreography in what ultimately ends up being a fightless episode. Anyway, next up is Wisdom, which involves the pair having to guess how to solve a classic super superhero situation drawn on a blackboard. This is definitely the weakest of the three, as Enid kind of just lucks into the solution after some fun chalkboard animation, while Elodie gets the answer through actually working it out, and it's hard to get anything out of it besides that the pair are different. Luckily though, the episode quickly gets to its climax, with Foxtail introducing us to the Strength Challenge, which is the simplest of the three, just a rope climbing race. Of course, the characters end up just sprinting up the ropes without any hands, which allows for a conversation between between the two. The pair seem like finally talking is about to heal the barrier between them, when all of a sudden Elodie bursts into some kind of green fiery form, which she only awakes from when the, her rampage causes Enid to tumble through the sky. Elodie's decision to not let her friend die is a nice reminder that she does have some kind of character, and the heartwarming conversation that the entire episode has been leading towards finally happens against some of the most beautiful backgrounds in the entire show. Elodie's apology is received in a pretty low-key manner that doesn't force Enid to deviate too far from her character, and it's a really nice ending to a pretty fun episode. Overall, redeeming Elodie was a pretty tall order, and I think this episode does a pretty good job achieving this, and showing how her and Enid were once close friends, and how Elodie's ambition just got in the way. While it does have some slow moments, it could have perhaps used more time on just letting Enid and Elodie talk to each other, the ending conversation between the pair is well written and animated, and makes the whole experience quite enjoyable. So yeah, the the miniseries is pretty easily two for two, heading into the midpoint. Are you ready for some mega football? I'll explain what I can before the game starts, though. When's the game start? In about a minute and 45 seconds. <laughs> The uncanny, hellish version of the typical OKKO OK that kicks off this episode and ends up being the dream of a homesick Enid certainly jolts the audience from the beginning and also serves as a reminder of the weirdness of these plausible episodes. I love the small interaction between Elodie and Enid once she wakes up, and of course Sunshine casually pointing out that Enid just started protagonist in the middle of class is about as classic of an OKKO OK gag as any gag can be. 
With how much the series loves to do tropes and then subvert them, there was no way that we were going to get an entire school arc without Enid playing a sport, and the show's subversion is that the sport is mega football, a seemingly ruleless chaos session that eventually somehow results in a winner. The pep rally that establishes that Point Prep somehow competes in the same league as the general citizens of the plaza is loaded with some fantastic jokes, even if the gag with playing the exact same cheering shot over and over and over again was probably not worth it. Vicky's muscles popping Spongebob style is a great physical gag though, and a nice way to shove Enid into the action. I love the joke of Sparko making fun of the short amount of time between the pep rally and the actual game, with the emphasis on the idea that the rules hardly matter. While having KO and Rad be in 4 out of the 5 episodes in the arc that was supposed to be about Enda leaving her comfort zone definitely sounds lame, and ultimately kind of is, it's hard to complain about getting some of the trio's interactions that makes the series so fantastic. Ko's gag about being every role besides player in the game Bugs Bunny style makes his presence in the episode quite joke productive, and Raz serves as a nice benchmark for Ine to realize how much she's changed. There's kind of a weird flaw with the actual way this contrast is presented though, as Ine goofing off with Rad instead of actually trying to win the game is shown as something that Foxtail shouldn't be upset about, when in reality it makes complete sense that Ine should be expected to at least actively try to win, even if it's not to the extent that Point Prep expects her to. When the action does pick up in the game's second half at the urging of Foxtail, the choreography does keep up in order to create some pretty creative scenes visually. Again, the show falters a bit in the expectation that a game between two rivals shouldn't be taken seriously at all, but it's easy to look past and just enjoy the bright colors and funny jokes. Towards the end of the game, we get another look into the mystery of the arc, when chip damage is shown giving Sparko the power that LOD received at the end of the last episode, causing him to go supernova and win the game, only to end up exhausted himself without any knowledge of what happened. The interaction between the trio at the end of the game is more adorable without the knowledge that they're just going to come back a few minutes into the next episode, and Enid ends this episode with the proclamation that she's going to figure out what's up at point prep. Overall, this episode is definitely the weakest of the first three, and that's largely because of the lack of focus on inner character relationships outside of the pre-established adorable fest that is K.O. Rad and Enid, and even there, not much is really developed. Still, the episode does have some entertaining sequences, pushes the mystery forward, and the series' main cast being so consistently funny really doesn't let an episode with all three of them be bad, but I definitely think this episode could have taken more advantage of being in the miniseries format. Either way, let's just hope the next episode can improve as we move into Mystery Sleepover. More so than any of the other ones I'm talking about in this video, this episode links to the next pretty directly. Which is unfortunate, given that if you only watched these episodes on television, you were staring down a 10 month wait between them. Gotta love 2018 Cartoon Network. Anyway, back to the episode, we start off with some really fun Eden and Elodie shenanigans. It's fun to see the pair actually being friends after the last episode mostly separated them, and it's just nice in general to see some Elodie when she's not actively in conflict with the main cast. Anyway, this Elodie fun session is cut when Enid has to go pick up the pizza, where she witnesses Gray Man and Sparko having a sketchy conversation. The scene doesn't reveal much that the audience doesn't already know, perhaps besides just making it clear that Gray Man is Sparko were in on it, but giving Enid confirmation that her suspicions are correct fully adds to the mystery part of the title. The introduction of Rad and K.O. is, as I mentioned before, kind of lame, although the show's comedy doesn't really work if a character is by themselves, so without significantly changing the plot, this might have been the only way the episode could have worked out. The stuff with the trio by themselves is a bit boring given what the show usually is, but once they start hanging out with Elodie, the comedic value definitely starts to pick up pretty dramatically. It's fun watching the four characters hang out as we get to see some dynamics that are pretty fun, like K.O. and Elodie, which eventually ends with Elodie seemingly snapping at him out of nowhere with a spiel about how hard it is to get into point prep and how K.O. doesn't really stand a chance. It's a really harsh turn that's obviously met with a really harsh response by Enid, as it seems like Elodie hasn't really changed as much as Enid thought that she did. This scene likely would have hit harder if the last episode had shown the pair more instead of separating them, but nevertheless, it's still a really impactful scene to set off the end of the miniseries. 
Eldie bails to the gifted program as Enid cheers up a pretty bummed KO, and the trio follow Elodie to do a little investigation. Definitely some Metal Gear Solid vibes as they creep down the hallway. As Elodie sneaks into the secret room, a fight is kicked off between the security drones and the bodega men, which has the high quality and choreography that you've come to expect with the show. But the message of the three of them being only able to pass the test when they're combined is nice at the surface, but a little bit sad when further examined. Anyway, the exposition with chip damage is mostly just the characters learning what the audience already knows, but they get through this scene rather impressively quickly to prevent it from ever getting stale. The episode ends with a very short chase scene, with the antenna gag coming back and providing a pretty fun ending sequence. KO destroying the photograph at the end of the episode feels like a bit of an obtuse way to hammer in the idea that the trio was back together for good, but it still has fuzzy feelings and such. Overall, this episode is fine, I guess. Not much really happens, but it has a fun action sequence in the middle, and the LED stuff at the beginning is quite enjoyable. Luckily though, we don't have to wait 10 months to get to the last part of the point prep arc, being the finale, final exams. Don't let it drop! Don't let it drop! <laughs> Okay, I know I've been a bit harsh on the last two episodes, so I'll go ahead and say it here. This episode is fantastic. From the beginning, they do a nice job with the task of recapping the last episode, as we get a couple of great jokes in and a full catching up in less than 30 seconds. Also, from the beginning of this episode, the show fixes what I've been complaining about for the last two episodes and gives Enid some time to face an actual challenge without KO and Red again, giving her Elodie as an eventual partner. Elodie and Enid's conversation immediately following the boys' capture is perhaps the best written scene of the entire finale, as the show makes Ellie's point of view as reasonable as possible. Her character throughout this entire episode is just phenomenally well written to create actual motivations that distinguish her from the Lakewood method of heroing. Her temporary rejection of Enid results in both an impactful moment and a great shot, as Enid begins a mad dash for the elevator. It's a quick scene that shows the rashness that Enid is prone to without anybody by her side, but luckily, before any amount of time really passes, Elodie is back in the fray. It's unfortunate that the 11 minute runtime necessitates emotional moments to be undone in mere seconds, but hey, what can you do? Elodie clearly hating her decision the entire time makes for some great comedy throughout the pair's adventures to the HQ, as we get the first big twist of the episode, being that Chip Damage is an android created by Gray Man that has gone haywire. This reveal is handled really well, his butt being the source of his power straddles the line of being too silly for the episode, but never quite goes past it. Greyman's explanation of his motives are backed by some great illustrations of a younger point, and is a nice twist that was possible but not easy to see coming. After this, we finally get an action sequence that tops the fight against the heads in the first episode, as most of the rest of the episode is just an absolutely beautiful fight as the characters all fall from the window. Besides just some ridiculously cool choreography, as seen in every other fight in this arc, we also get to see Elodie's character development in a really well-written manner, and while it is a bit lame that neither Elodie or Enid end up being the character to deliver the final blow, the fight is animated so well that it's hard to really care. The scene is just such the perfect climax to the entire miniseries in both scale and tone, and genuinely shows what the series can do with an hour's worth of time to tell a story. The ending with the duo both ending up getting A pluses for being true heroes is a softball that the show easily hits out of the park, with the scene cutting really well to Ina telling Elodie her plan to return to the plaza. This scene is really well done, as it seems like Elodie's decision to stay at point prep is gonna have to have some kind of forced reasoning, but the show really does make it make sense from her perspective, as the academy fits her style of being a superhero, and her goal of wanting to be a real version of what Chip Damage was is a really noble place to leave her character. Anyway, the last pair of scenes are the reveal that Foxtail was behind it all, forcing Gray Man out and setting up her role as the antagonist to the second season's finale, and the final scene with Sparko coming back to Lakewood after realizing it wasn't meant for him either, as the miniseries ends with the fist bump it was always destined to. All in all, this mid-season finale has everything you can really hope for. Some really hard-hitting, well-written dialogue, some dramatic reveals, and a massively fun action sequence to end it all. Really fun episode, and one of the best in the series.
And that's the last episode. So to answer the question asked at the beginning of the video, does the miniseries format work in OKKO? Yeah, it pretty clearly does. As besides a few hiccups regarding especially that middle episode, the point prep arc is an overwhelming success. The setting introduced to the Academy itself is a really fun and vibrant place for the bulk of the episodes to take place and is filled with characters that feel fleshed out. While Sparkle's role does end up dwindling as the miniseries progresses, his character still ends up being pivotal and showing that anybody can get caught up in all the shenanigans at point. As Sparko isn't some kind of kid of a wealthy hero, he's from Lakewood just like Enid, something that the first episode takes time to really drive in. While Sparko's appearances are ultimately quite enjoyable, the real star of the side character elevated to main character show is obviously Elodie, who takes over the episode whenever she's allowed to actually be a part of it. Some of her dialogue once she gets past her feud with Enid ends up being arguably the best part of the entire miniseries, as her motives are complex and reasonable in a way that is shocking given the runtime of each episode and where her character began the miniseries at. Despite standing in opposition to our protagonist, her belief that Point can ultimately be a positive is well founded and explained, and her speech at the end of the miniseries of wanting to be a real version of what Chip Damage was created to be is genuinely charming. Speaking of which, Chip Damage and and Foxtail by extension serve as the ultimate antagonist of this thing, although they really only come into direct opposition to Enid after the third episode. In this role, they're mostly fine, giving the series a somewhat mysterious element while never quite being interesting in themselves. It's not like they had to really be anyway, as the main conflict of this miniseries is never Enid versus Foxtail or Enid versus Chip Damage, but it's really between the two different ideas of heroing, the Point Method and the Lakewood method. And while Enid's idea that anybody can be a hero is obviously what the show wants to present as the correct option, Elodie's point of view at the end clearly illustrates that it's not entirely black and white, as Chip Damage, even as fake as he was, still inspired many people to want to become heroes, including K.O., the titular character of the entire series. Overall, the point prep arc is ultimately truly tremendously great, producing five episodes filled with great character relationships, terrific choreography throughout multiple fun sequences, and an overarching mystery for it all, all while giving Enid some much appreciated character development and never losing the consistent comedic quality prevalent throughout the series. Anyway, that's gonna be about it for me. If you want to see even more of my terrible takes on animation, or just what I'm working on next, you can check out my Twitter in the description. Either way, this has been Ample Samuel, and I'll see you in about a week with a much more depressing video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.